You are listening to the Maker's Church Podcast. For more information about our community, please visit makerschurch.org. Our hearts are so unique and so complex. I see the beautiful thing about our hearts is by their very nature, they're non-dualistic. And non-dualistic means that there is no separation. It's not this or that. It's this and that. See, by very nature, our hearts are both. You ever been really anxious and also had a little bit of courage at the same time? Or been so extremely filled with joy, but also intermixed with that just hints of sorrow? Or have you had a moment when you were so angry you started to laugh? See, that is the complex nature of our hearts. This non-dualistic reality that in one moment we can be at the highest high and also at the lowest low and that's where life comes from. Proverbs 4, 23, scripture points to the fact that life actually flows from our hearts. It says, guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. I love the message version. The message version says, keep vigilant watch over your heart. That's where life starts. See, spiritual tradition teaches us that all life begins in our hearts. It's not just emotion, it's actually our physical bodies. In Proverbs it says that a healthy heart brings life to the bones. The problem with our hearts is that they're all so unique. Your heart's not like my heart. Proverbs 14, 10 says, each heart knows its own bitterness and no one else can share its joy. See, what that tells me is that there's things that my heart knows that you will never know. And there's things going on this morning in your heart that we will never know unless we name it. There's things stirring within us that unless we actually give name to it, nobody will be able to understand because your heart is so unique to you. And that's why it's so important for us to listen to our hearts, to be in tune with what's happening because from our hearts, all life flows. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this morning. God, we thank you that You do not give your heart to us in small bits or in pieces, but you offer us all of it, God. And we're here, God, hopefully in a posture that offers you all of us. God, for every person sitting here who is wrestling with that non-duality, the this and that, God, I just pray that there would be a moment of peace. God, even in the midst of anxiety, there would be a moment of peace. God, even in the midst of doubt, there would be a moment of faith. And that as we unpack your scriptures, that we would hear your truth that has been calling to us this whole time. God, calling to our hearts, telling us that this is the way of life. We give this morning to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, good morning, Makers Church. Before you sit down, would you say hi to a neighbor and just tell them, hey, you got a really big heart. You got a really big heart. Man, happy Sunday. If we've never met, my name is Shalise and I'm one of the pastors here. Um, And we are stepping into an incredible new series today entitled Blueprint, Plans for a Healthy Heart. Um, And it's actually a perfect time for this series for myself and my husband. We're getting ready to sell our current home um, and to buy a new home. And so we started talking about, you know, like what are the things that we want in this new home? right? And we quickly realized that we have very different priorities, right? I would love a big kitchen. And Drew's like, we could get a George Foreman grill and I want a man cave. And I'm like, no. And I would love like a walk-in closet for my clothes, my shoes. And Drew would love a walk-in closet for like his Legos, you know? And uh, I 
would love to have a pool. I think pools are awesome, and Drew hates pools and freedom. So, you know, there... <laughs> As much as it seems like sometimes we just don't agree, you know, there are certain things we agree are absolutely essential for the health of our marriage. Can I get an amen for a double vanity? Like my bathroom area, your bath. Let's just go with two bathrooms, right? His and hers. I love it, right? For the health of our marriage, there are certain things that are absolutely essential and foundational. And you know what's so interesting is that our hearts are the same way. There are certain things that for our hearts to be healthy and whole are absolutely essential for us to have. And I love this image of a blueprint because that's what a blueprint is. A blueprint is a drawing that shows you the structural foundational elements for what is required to have a strong foundation, a healthy home. And then for us, what does that look like for our hearts? So we're going to be diving into blueprint plans for a healthy heart over the next four weeks. And I'm glad that you're joining us um, today. We're going to kick it off in Proverbs 24. Proverbs, if you've never read Proverbs, um, it's all about wisdom. The beginning of Proverbs, it says, for wisdom and instruction and teaching. And Proverbs 24, 3 through 4, says, by wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. And so today we're going to unpack what I think and what scripture points to being just the foundational element of a healthy heart. And that is wisdom. Can you say wisdom? Wisdom. Thank you, Vaughn. Can everybody else say wisdom? Awesome. Proverbs 4, 5 says, get wisdom. I love how blunt it is. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. Turn to your neighbor and say, get wisdom. Now, don't be offended if they turn to you. They didn't know what you were going through. You know, it's not, it's not personal. But, like, why wisdom? To be honest, wisdom is not, like, the sexiest of the things. You know, you don't go, oh, he's so wise. Usually it's like charisma and character, you know, all these, like, oh, he's well-dressed, he's articulate. But over and over and over, Scripture was pointing to wisdom. Wisdom is the foundational element for life. From wisdom, all life flows. In Proverbs 3, 19 through 20, I read this verse, and I'm sure I've read this. You know you do the Proverbs a day, so I've probably read it at least 36 times. Uh, But you do... uh, Proverbs 3, and I, and I read this verse again, and you know when you're looking for something and then you see it? And I was looking for wisdom, and it said, by wisdom, the Lord founded the earth. By understanding, he created the heavens. By his knowledge, the deep fountains of the earth burst forth, and the dew settles beneath the night sky. <laughs> I love that scripture because what it speaks to is that wisdom is actually this ancient tradition, a spiritual discipline that goes all the way back to the foundation of the earth. This means wisdom isn't just about being smart. It's not about getting a good GPA. This is good news for some of you. It's not about your test scores. It's not about the college you went to. It's not about what that latest article tells you or that most recent Huffington Post article. It's not about five ways to please a man or the best diet or knowing what car to get or being able to make wise choices. Wisdom at its root, at its core, is about being able to align with something that has been since the very beginning of the earth. Wisdom at its Essence is being able to discern what has been truth the whole time. Have you ever gotten some truth, some wisdom from somebody that you shouldn't have taken? Yeah. Um, I I really hate getting bad advice from people. You know, you open up your heart. And I remember telling a really good friend, I'll not be named, um, but let's just say his name was Pastor Derek. I remember telling him once about a guy I liked. And I, you know, I was just like, oh, man, like, give me the, like, you're my pastor. Tell me what to do. You're married. You see, like, it seems to be going well. Give me, give me the wisdom. And um, he looks at me and goes, just go up and kiss him and see what happens. <laughs> I did not take that advice. <laughs> and I'm glad because that man was not my husband. <laughs> 
But then you ever been like on the freeway and Waze tells you to get off some random exit and you see like 19 back roads and you're like, Waze, no, you clearly have lost your mind, right? And one time Waze was like, get off on Claremont Mesa Boulevard, go 14 miles east and then cut over. And I was like, what? I should have listened. Remember when the 163 shut down because of that gas leak? I was on the freeway for two hours. I had like 10 minutes left, and it took me two hours. And the problem is how, I know, right? (laughs) Like sometimes it's clear to spot bad advice, but sometimes it's not that clear. You're like, what do I listen to? Who do I, you know, I think the internet is absolutely ruining us for wisdom. There is no way to discern what is good and what is not. Uh, can you get pregnant from kissing your boyfriend? Yes, a 13-year-old girl in England will tell you you can, right? Or did you know that you can actually lose weight by only eating cheeseburgers? The cheeseburgerdiet.com, Google it, check it out. Somewhere on the internet, there is a a post, you know, that says that Creed is still the greatest band of all time. Like, the internet is full of horrible advice. And we're just talking about, like, dating and (laughs) cheeseburgers and awful music. And, like, how much more complex are our hearts? How much more difficult to understand I mean, I think my heart is one of the weirdest ones of all. You ever been like really happy and then five minutes later you're crying for no reason? Like welcome to having a heart. This is what is so challenging about it and this is where life flows from. My heart can't even make up its mind. And that's where my life flows from. No wonder so many of us feel like we're constantly in chaos. See, it takes so much wisdom to know what to do. We need this ancient tradition tradition of wisdom to root us in truth and something that has been true the whole time. And I know what you're thinking. Great. If I knew what was true, this would be easy. I could just do it. Right? But scripture actually tells us that wisdom is available to all of us. It's for you. It's for me. It's for your friend who does that weird thing over and over. And you're like, what is wrong with that guy? Like, wisdom is for them too. Proverbs 1, 20 through 21. Out in the open, wisdom calls aloud. She raises her voice in the public square, and on top of the wall, she cries out. At the city gate, she makes her speech. Two things here that I love about wisdom. One, she's a woman. Whoop, whoop. I love that. I love that wisdom is personified as a woman. It's like feminine, uh, but it's also like strong and powerful. And if you know me, I lend more towards like the strong and powerful side uh, of, of the female-ness. And I was at my mom's house the other day for dinner, and my mom was like, Shalise, use your indoor voice. And I was like, Mom, this is my indoor voice. Okay, I spend all day yelling over high schoolers to try and get them to listen to me, you know, and she's like, I know, but just, and she had to tell me, she's like, Shalise, use your indoor voice. And so now, next time my mom tells me, I'm like, mom, this is my wisdom voice. Like wisdom was shouting. I'm trying to get you to hear me. But I love it says that wisdom is this woman and that she is shouting to us. And I also love that wisdom is not hidden over like in the corner, Right, it says, out in the open, wisdom calls. She raises her voice in the public square, on top of the wall, at the city gate. She is everywhere, and she is loud. And yet so many of us live like wisdom is like the greatest hide-and-seek player ever. And we're just like, Marco, you know, and she's real quiet. No, it says, no, wisdom is shouting to us. So what is our problem? Proverbs 1, 5, let the wise listen and add to their learning and let the discerning get guidance. Proverbs 19, 20, listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. See, the problem isn't that wisdom is not available to us. It's that I am a horrible listener. You are probably a horrible listener. My husband and I fight about this all the time because we'll be doing something and I'm talking to him and I look over and he's doing something on his phone and I do the classic, you're not even listening to me. 
And do you know what he does? He regurgitates back to me perfectly every word I just said for like the past two minutes. It is maddening. And I'm like, no, but you're not listening, right? Like, I I feel like you're hearing me, but you're not listening. And I was like, what's the difference between hearing and listening? See, listening is about a posture when we're hearing something. It's about looking at somebody and being willing and ready to receive, saying, like, I'm hearing you, and I'm not just hearing you. I'm now going to go apply what I have heard. It's not enough just to take in the information. See, my husband and I went to premarital counseling not to just take in information. The goal is to apply the information. And when we went to counseling, I, we looked at our, our, our amazing counselors. It was Pastor Mark and his wife's uh, parents, Tom and Carolyn. And when I said, Tom, Carolyn, like, tell us the things we don't know. Don't tell me what I want to hear. I was like, I need you to tell me the things that I'm not even thinking of because I don't have the wisdom to see that far down the road. I said, I need you to tell me not just, you know, how to not go to bed angry or how to continue to date each other. I said, I need truth that is rooted in something that has been here from the beginning. And I love that. It's about wisdom that is rooted in an ancient tradition that would bring life, that life would flow from our marriage. But if we're honest, most of us do not approach life with that kind of openness. We went into premarital counseling ready to listen. We were ready to ask questions and to hear what they had to say and to put it into practice. But the problem is that a lot of us don't have that same kind of openness. We don't ask the right questions. And then when we get wisdom and advice, we don't like to listen. And so we don't add to our learning and we repeat the same mistakes over and over and over. Have you ever had somebody come to you with the same problem? Over and over and over And at some point you kind of forget like the whole Jesus thing. And you just want to like scream at them and shout like, you're not listening to me. I already told you what to do. Like wisdom is shouting at you. This is not really hard to understand. Are you tired of not listening? See, I think it's exhausting coming up with excuses over and over and over again for why we're not doing the thing that we know we should be doing. Because we can't be honest and just say, I don't want to. And so we make up these excuses and we go in this cycle again and again and again. And there's no life in that. There's no wisdom in that. Because James 4, 17, this verse wrecks me. I remember reading this in a in college, and it kind of shifted everything for me because I I was at this Christian internship and I was really concerned about doing the right thing. You know, it's like, don't listen to secular music. Don't do this. Like, do the right thing. And, And we had, like, these lists and these rules, and it just didn't feel like it was enough. I was like, yeah, but, like, but that's not a problem for me. Like, I can listen to Coldplay and be fine. Like, I'm not, you know, like having an existential spiritual crisis Like, yellow, what does it all mean? There is no God. No. Like, I'm fine with Coldplay, you know? And I remember sitting in my dorm room. I remember it vividly. I remember sitting in my dorm room, and I was having some quiet time, and I I pulled up James 4.17. And I will never forget the moment I read this verse because it changed my life forever. And it says, so whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, For him, it is sin. If you know the right thing to do, but you don't do it, it says for him, that is sin. And we let sin into our life, and sin is the very absence of life. And so when we're not doing the thing that we know that we're supposed to do, the thing that wisdom is shouting at us to do, we allow sin to come into our lives. And where sin is, shame is never very far behind. You know what shame says to you? Shame says you should know better by now. Shame says you shouldn't be doing that thing anymore. Shame says, man, don't let them find out that you don't know what you're doing. Shame is crippling. 
Shame takes that foundation that we have and it slowly chips away at it. Because when we let sin and shame into our hearts, it constricts our very life source. And it's crazy that all that can happen just by wisdom that we don't apply. Maybe you're sitting here and you're like, I don't feel very wise. Like, I don't feel like wisdom. <laughs> if she's shouting, like, I must be deaf because I'm not hearing the thing that I need to do in James 1 through 5. It's so beautiful and it's so simple. It says, hey, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask. Just let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given him. He gives without reproach. Without reproach what it means without disappointment. You ever messed up and your dad said, I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. And you're like, no, it's worse. Oh, just be angry. Because disappointment is at its core, it's at its root that you did something and we're so sad because there was a better choice. But it says God gives wisdom to all without reproach, without disappointment. He's not upset that you don't know that thing. He is not like me. He's not angered when you come to him over and over and over with the same thing. He says, if you don't know what to do, ask me. I will give it to you without reproach, without Disappointment, and we as the church should be the same way. That when somebody comes to us and says, I don't know what I'm doing. Hey, there's no disappointment. There's no shame. Just ask. I bet there's somebody sitting here within a stone's throw of you who has the answer to your problem. Who has the wisdom that you need. And all it takes is for us to be humble enough to say, I don't know. I'm not really sure how to do this thing that I'm stepping into. Or you know what? I've been stepping in it over and over and over again, and I don't know how to break the cycle. See, wisdom isn't just for the pastors. Wisdom isn't just for the smart people. Wisdom, wisdom is essential for life, and it's for everyone. Matthew 7, I love the story. It says, therefore, everyone who hears, not just the smart people, not just the wise, says everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. Everyone who listens and applies is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down and the streams rose and the wind blew and it beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. Where have you built your house? Where is your foundation? It's not a matter of if the storm's gonna come, it's, it's a matter of when. And see, when your foundation is on the rock, when your foundation is on that sure footing, when your foundation is in a God who has been since the very beginning. When the storms come, we don't have to fear. And isn't that real wisdom? It's not about all the other things, it's about that foundation of where you start from. Because let's be honest, we're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to do stupid things. We're all going to look back and go, well, that was a dumb decision. But wisdom is about rooting and anchoring our foundation in something that has been true. And maybe you're here and you've never had that sure foundation. 
Maybe you're sitting here and you feel unsteady. You don't feel anchored and you don't feel rooted. And what I love is that in the same way that like wisdom is for everyone, like Jesus is for everyone. Right? First John says that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be called his children. See, in the same way that wisdom cries out to us, Jesus actually cries out to us. It says all creation is shouting the glory of who God is. Jesus cries out to us that we are beloved, that we are his sons, that we are his daughters, that he loves us, that there is nothing on this earth that can separate us from his love. He loves us without disappointment, without reproach, without shame. And it's so beautiful that last week we celebrated Jesus' death and resurrection. Because this is that same power that raised Christ from the dead. It's the same power that lives within us that has the ability to raise us to life. And that's what a healthy heart should look like. It should be a heart that is fully alive. So if you're here and you have never said yes to Jesus, you've never made Jesus your sure foundation, maybe you've thought about it, You did it a long time ago. But it's never been something that you were so sure of. It's never been something so clear for you that, like the ancient wisdom tradition, that it's been true since the very beginning. If that's you and you're here and God's just been stirring on your heart, I would love to pray for you. So if you could bow your heads with us. If you're here, and you want to say yes to Jesus, to making him your sure foundation, I would love to pray for you. If you just put your hand up real quick, and then you can put it back down. And then I see you. If that's you just in your heart, just say these words, say, Jesus, I need you as my sure foundation. I hear you calling and I want to listen to your voice and I want to follow you from this day forward. Maybe for you, Jesus is calling out and you've already chosen to follow him, but you've never made it a public declaration. Maybe your faith has been a little more private and today is the day to go public. Today is the day to shout it out. And if that's you and you're here and you've never been baptized, right after this, we're going to go outside and we're going to celebrate with baptisms. And we would love for you to participate. If you just feel that tug, just meet us in the lobby. Today is the day that you want to declare that Jesus is your Lord. Maybe some of you are sitting here and like that song we sang earlier, maybe you just feel like your heart is just in pieces. Like you are the house that fell with a great crash and maybe you feel like you're starting over, like you're starting to build up from the foundation. I remember the first time I heard this song and I was struggling so hard to accept what real love looked like. I didn't feel like I had it. I didn't feel like I could find it. I was in that space of non-duality where I was happy and sad and anxious and at peace. And I remember hearing this song for the first time. And it said, your love is not fractured. It is not a troubled mind. It isn't anxious. It's not the restless kind. Your love is not passive. It's never disengaged. It's always present. And it hangs on every word we say. Your love keeps its promises. It keeps its word. It honors what's sacred because its vows are good. Your love is not broken. It's not insecure. Your love is not selfish. Your love 
is pure. And James 3.17 says, but the wisdom from above is first of all pure. God's love is pure and wisdom is pure. And how do we know when we're living in wisdom? It says wisdom is pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times and willing to yield to others. Wisdom is full of mercy. Not judgment, not shame, not condemnation, but mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. I think, church, this is what has been true since the foundation of the earth. These things, this wisdom, that is the plan for a healthy heart. We're going to sing this song again one more time. And as we do, we're going to have a time of prayer. And if you just feel like your heart is at war with itself, we just want to speak out. And name those things. Remember, your heart is unique. We can't know what's in your heart, what bitterness and what joy, but we want to share in it with you. And if you're here and you just feel like, man, I just, I got to get wisdom. It's that simple. I got to get it. Get wisdom. Get understanding. It starts with asking the right questions and then being willing to listen. And so we're going to be up front here, and I'm here if... You want to come down for prayer, we would love to pray with you. Or just create a space for you to be able to name some of those things that are in your heart. And as you name these things, I want you to watch the power go away from them and life return. And just ask for wisdom. My prayer is that you would listen because she is shouting. God, we love you. We are so grateful God, that you call to us. And for every heart that is here, God, that just needs to hear from you, may your voice be the loudest. You are listening to the Makers Church Podcast. For more information about our community, please visit makerschurch.org.